Hey everybody, it's Mike Venus, La Soul, and I'm back. And I'm here to give some tips to anybody that's new to using the force or that's new to working in a standalone hardware type situation, right? Or production center, okay? Now, I own the Akai Force. I was a previous owner of the MPC Live 2, but I flipped it, and I'm learning the MPC 2000 XL. And I'm going to kind of exclude the 2000 XL from this video because it lacks a lot of the features that's inside the Force and inside the MPC Live 2. Right. Now... If you're coming from working from like a doll, either working in a computer or a laptop situation to now working on one of these devices, I say one of the the one of the either misconceptions that's being put out there or just the greenness of, of being in that environment is that you think you can do the same thing you can do in a doll. Can you? Yes. But you will have to switch up your, your workaround. You understand? So the first thing I would suggest to anybody that get these devices or any new standalone hardware uh, groove box or, you know, center like that, that possess a sampler, a sequencer, and sense as sound modulars to start your production is first and foremost, get familiar with the sample bass tracks. Now in the Force and in the MPC, they share the same tracks. They got an audio, they got six tracks. They got the audio track, the plug-in track, the MIDI track, the CV track, right? The key groove track, and the drum track. Okay, I think that's it. Audio. Plug-in, MIDI, CV, key group, drum track, right, six. The sample based tracks or tracks that utilize samples as sound sources will be your drum tracks and your key group tracks. Now, I know a lot of people aren't really familiar with key groups, which I love. I think is probably the most versatile thing you can use, but I'm gonna mainly focus on drum tracks because I feel like that is a lot of what people use. So, one strategy that I find that works really well working in such a limited processing environment because in the MPC and in the Akai Force, it only has two gigs of RAM. And technically, you don't have two gigs of RAM because some of that RAM is being used up to operate the, the OS, right? The firmware. And some of that OS, I mean, some of that uh, memory space is being held up by um, your internal memory, which is two gigs. So really, you got to look at it like you're utilizing less than two gigs, right? And the good thing about these devices, it tell you how much CPU is being used whenever you're working. Now... The first thing I would suggest is that either you learn to play around with the sampling features that, that is inside the MPC or the Force, or read the manual, or do both. I did both. I feel like, I know a lot of people don't like to read the manual, but I feel like reading the manual does clear up some, some basic questions that people ask or um, gripes or complaints that they have can easily be cleared up by utilizing uh, the manual. Just reference the manual and getting clarity on what is being said and by application. So the first thing I would suggest, right, is to learn how to resample. A big part of my workflow working inside the force is or even in the NPC was resampling. That's either bouncing the track down to a, 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 a audio wave, right? Bouncing down to a track, 
or bouncing a track to a sample, excuse me, um, or bouncing it to an audio track, or utilizing the sampler and re resampling, uh, like push the sample, trigger the sequence and have it play and it capture it or use the looper, right? To create a sample, right? Then, you know, or using flattening, you can flatten either the pad or the track to create a wave file as well, right? So these are these are critical features that's inside these devices that will help you to free up a lot of processing um, space and really spare the CPU and the RAM. Okay, so one way I go about it is I can pull up a pull up a plug-in track, play out my MIDI for that track. And then open up the looper, set how many bars I had for the, the, the clip or track I made, and then set it to trigger whenever I, you know, start it, record it in. Once I got it, I can clear out the plug-in track and I got the sounds that I want, or I can flatten it or bounce it to a sample. Now, the cool thing about the NPCs you can bounce down a sequence. So say for an example, you pull up maybe three or four plugins and you want to layer these sounds to create your, your overall chord progression, melody, right? You can bounce down the whole sample, I mean the whole sequence into one sample. You can't really do that on the force. You could do it by the clip, but you can't do it in the, in the force like you would on the NPC. Then what you would do is take that that now that sample and put it either in a drum track on a pad and then make a, 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 a clip or sequence triggering that loop. And now what would have been a lot of CPU being used up to maintain the plugin or plugins, right? To maintain all the parameters you set to maintain any of the processing that you add on there, like adding effects or what whatnot, all that when you bounce it or resample it or or create a loop with the looper or the sampler, all that is getting baked onto that, and now you you freed up all that 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 processing that you use, you freed all, all that up to now that the device is recognizing that you only triggered that one MIDI note. You understand? But yet you still got this, this loop. Same thing whenever, say you want to use the drum sense to create, uh, uh, you know, your drum kit or the sounds you want to use with your melody, right? What I would like to, what I, what I would do is I either Go to the sampler and trigger one sound, one sound at a time, and then go to sample edit and trim it up. Then, you know, put that on a put that in the drum track and put it on a pad, right? Or I will create, let's say maybe let's say a, a one. Depending on how many sounds you want to use, let's say I'm just using four sounds: a kick, a snare, a closed hat open hat right I can set those notes on a quarter note thing so I got I'm recording one bar now I have a bar of these sounds got enough space in between the sounds so that when I go to cut it and chop it up and then put it in a drum track I it makes it easy whenever I go to you know chop it up and put it in there and then after I do that I can lay down my MIDI right easy easy now if you you if you have some experience working with key groups right i'll go into that in the next video so that that's what i'll say learn the sampling learn your sampler learn the different sample tracks you uh sample features you can use to create 
your tracks. Mike out.